God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.
had long patience for it. And so he received the early, the, the early and the later rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord draws near.
says, and I'm okay with that. Hallelujah. I believe you need to build a relationship with your Bible anyway, because <laughs> <laughs> that way you'll know where it's at, and you won't, nobody will ever be able to fool you, because you'll know it was really there. Amen. amen. So when you get it, say amen, and I'll move further. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good job. <laughs> and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jerusalite had a vineyard which was in Je Jezreel, Higher, higher, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Hand by the palace. You see, I can't even read that, and I certainly can't read this this morning. Of Ahab, king of Samaria. So it, it was near the palace of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me the vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my father unto thee. So really what, what the uh, problem here is that Ahab was the king, and he was married to Jezebel. And Jezebel, before Jezebel hooked up with Ahab, Ahab was a man that believed in God and trusted God. But when he hooked up with Jezebel, then he got in a whole lot of trouble because Jezebel persuaded him to do things wrong and persuaded him not to serve the living God. And she instituted Baal worship and idol worship and she did a whole lot of things. So, so she, you know, she, Ahab says, so, well, you know, that vineyard's next to the palace and it really looks really good. It's good land. It tolls good. It, it bears a good crop and and so I'm going to see if I can't get it from him. But you know, he underestimated. Everybody had not bowed their knee to Baal. Everybody had not given up on what God had said. So Ahab said, listen, I'll give you the money or trade you or another vineyard. But Naboth said, wait just a minute. Uh, he said, I have the Lord forbid it me. I cannot give you my father's inheritance. And inheritance is something that's been given to you because of the death of someone else most of the time. Well, Jesus bled and died, and he gave us an inheritance in him. God, help me preach today. So you see, this chapter really is all about the Jezebel schemes to convince and to connive, to remove God. Well, in case you've not heard it, let me be the first to 
tell you uh, there's a spirit of Jezebel being released uh, in the land of America and they're trying to silence the voice of God. Uh, they're trying to shut up the church. Uh, they're trying to drown out true uh, worship to the living God. Uh, but I come to tell you right now, I agree with Naboth. Uh, you cannot have what God has given me. Uh, hallelujah. It is my inheritance. Uh, he let it die. I can't give up what he's done for me. The old song says he brought me too far to leave me. Hallelujah. You don't know, you see, you don't might know where I've been or what I got into before the Lord rescued me. You don't know how many times I've had to ask him, come help me. And I'm like Naboth. Jesus gave it to me, and I am not giving it up for you. I'm not, I can't help it if you don't like the way I am. I can't help it if you don't appreciate how loud I can be. I'm not about any of that. I'm just here to tell you when I think of the goodness of God, my soul cries hallelujah. When I look back over my life and see how God brought me out, my soul says hallelujah. Somebody said he didn't have to do it, but he did. Somebody said when I think of the goodness of God. Neighbor said, you don't, you don't get it. My my father gave me this. We were all children of the most high God. Our father has given us an inheritance in him. So you see, Naboth refuses to fall to Ahab's scheme. So Ahab goes back to the house and Jezebel makes fun of him. So look how weak you are. You can't stand up for nothing. Look at you. She makes fun of him. You pitiful little thing, you. I'm talking about a Jezebel spirit, so you better you better ride with me because I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it works in the church, in the world. Come on, I'm just telling you. So, say, say in other words, what Jezebel does, she don't care who it hurts. That's right. She manipulates and controls, and she don't care who it hurts. She's determined to have her way. So while. Ahab is in there pouting in the bedroom or in whatever room he's in in the palace. Uh, uh, Jezebel's making a scheme. She said, listen, uh, we're going uh, to bring Naboth in and, and y'all will come by and give him some charges and falsely accuse him of some stuff that ain't really real. Jezebel does that right now, falsely accuses some uh, uh, things that ain't even real. Uh, and we get so caught up in the minor, we forget about the major things. Uh, we're hung up. Uh, somebody talked about me. Somebody hurt my feelings. My God, can we not mature past that place? Uh, can we not get past that place? Uh, they call Jesus every man of evil word they could think of. Uh, but he never stopped on his journey. Uh, hallelujah. They called him all kinds of things uh, except the son of the living God. Uh, but he came. He said, nobody going to take my life. Uh, I'm going to lay it down. Uh, I came for this reason. Uh, I came to bleed and die. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm like Naboth. Uh, no, no, no. The Lord forbid. Uh, you're not having what God has given to me. Uh, they can take my Bible. Uh, they can take my house. Uh, they can take my car. They can take whatever they want to take. Uh, but they cannot uh, take Jesus uh, out of my heart. Uh, hallelujah. Woo! So you see, you hear this phrase a lot of times in the church world. When I was a kid growing up, Jezebel meant that you looked worldly, that you had your oh. Can I talk about it? You had your hair chopped off, you had makeup on or whatever. So then you was called a Jezebel. Y'all remember those days? Y'all ain't old as I am. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pressing 70. So, uh, anyhow. But uh, if you come up in a holiness church, you heard that. If you had a red lips on, you was a Jezebel. Well, the church has moved so far from that now, we can't even discuss that. But let me tell you something. There's still a Jezebel spirit that's alive and well in the earth right now. So Jezebel was known for her sexual immorality. Can I really preach truth to you today? Well, if you look all across the land of America, every law they want to pass deals with sexual type things. I read this morning there after another thing that really bothered me, uh, that they want to change the age of consent for a child to the age of four. They have lost their ever-loving mind. 
a four-year-old cannot consent to a 50-year-old, uh, you can have your way. And yes, I'm going to preach about it. Uh, and yes, uh, I can go to Facebook jail. It won't be the first rodeo. Uh, but let me tell you right now, uh, the truth is going to stand when the world is on fire. Uh, and we can make our mind up uh, that we're going to make a stand and say, uh, enough is enough. Uh, you will not have our seed. Uh, you will not have our children. Uh, you will not destroy our sons and daughters. Uh, Oh, I feel Jesus. I'm trying my best. I'll tell you, somebody's got to be a voice. Uh, somebody's got to quit being chicken. Uh, well, you know what? They say, well, if you preach truth, they'll quit tithing. Uh, well, you have to answer to God if you don't give. Uh, I ain't got the answer for that. Uh, but I do have to answer if I don't preach the truth. Uh, and I come to preach the truth. Uh, I come to tell somebody, uh, Jezebel, uh, is after you, uh, and after your seed, uh, and after your inheritance, uh, and wants to make sure uh, that you miss uh, your Jezebel was so known for her immorality and idol worship that the Lord Jesus refers to her in the warning in Revelations to the church of Thyatira. We're going to Revelations 2. Two Sundays in a row. Hit Revelations. Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. <laughs> 18 says, And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, he said, I know all the good you've done. Uh -huh. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Yeah. Anyone that succumbs to the spirit of Jezebel, the end of it spiritually and naturally is death Amen. unless you repent. Amen. And you know, it makes me wonder how in the world Jezebel had so much authority and power that she could persuade people that were committed to God to walk away from their inheritance in God. There is a spirit of deception. I know I ain't going to get many amens, but it's all right. There's a spirit of deception that is sweeping our land. And it's not sweeping outside the church as much as it's in the church. People act like they don't even know what the Bible says anymore. But I'm here to tell you the Bible teaches you not to move the landmark. God, help me preach holiness today. Hallelujah. The Lord teach you wherever that landmark was, you're not supposed to be moving that landmark. And you've got to stay within the borders of the landmark. And the landmark is the Word of God. And what the Word of God says is what goes. And you live by it, you die by it. You judge yourself by it. And if you judge yourself, you won't have no need that God judge you because you've already made it right with Him. So he says, I I'll give her a space to repent. But if she don't repent, but now notice, notice what she is. She's a prophetess. Uh -huh. So that means she's in the house yeah. of God uh -huh. doing what she does. Uh -huh. Now, I, I'm going to get in some real, real, real trouble, but I've been there before. So let, can, can I just go ahead and tell you what really is in my heart today? So there's a lot of things that are going on in the church that God did not ordain to go on. Amen. And people, I'm not saying people don't have giftings because I believe they do. But I do believe the spirit of Jezebel takes over sometimes in the giftings. And they begin to use them against people. And they wound people and they hurt people. And that the Bible says that Jezebel has this kind of spirit where she's manipulative. I've heard preachers in pulpits, I believe, were under the influence of a Jezebel spirit. Because they would speak to the people in such a way. Till it was like a spiritual witch. Craft, 
if you don't do what I say, if you don't do what I tell you to do, well, honey, I love you, but if you're against the word of God, I can't do it for you. I'm sorry. If it don't line up with the book, I mean, you're going to have to talk a little bit. So you see, Jezebel, uh, most time you think she's a woman, but it can be anybody because that's, it's a spirit that takes over in people. So you see, the trouble with this thing is, um, I want to know where she got her authority that she could possess people and convince them to abandon their commitment to God. Mm. It's a sobering thought, ain't it? But you know as good as I do, as long as you've been in church and I've been in church, we've seen a lot of stuff. We've wondered, why in the world is that? Amen. Where did that come from? Amen. I don't see Jesus on that. Amen. 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 That's right. I know that's true. I believe in all the gifts of the Spirit, every Amen. one of them. I believe they operate in the church. I Amen. do believe that. But I do believe there's some deception that's going on with that sometimes Amen. now. Amen. And that's the same thing Jezebel was called a prophetess. That means she could see and she could say right. and she had the charisma, hallelujah, about her, that it draw people to her. And there's a lot of people, they're out there making it big because they have charisma, but they don't have anointing. It's one thing to have charisma, but it's another thing to have the anointing. Because it's the anointing that'll break and destroy the other. It's the anointing that'll make the difference. Hallelujah, you ain't got to look with the best of the best, but you got to have the heart that is the best of the best. You got to live to the best of your ability to please God uh, because he's given you an inheritance. Uh, hallelujah. And the good thing about the Lord is he don't change his mind about us. Uh, glory to God. He's always right there. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that same spirit uh, of compromise is present in the world right now and in the church world most of all. Uh, compromise is sweeping the church uh, by storm. Yeah. When people ain't come here, you preach because you preach too hard. Well, guess what? Keep going. Amen. I ain't changing. Amen. I ain't changing. I've come too far. I've come too far to look back again. Amen. Amen. So, you know, uh, when you look across the landscape of church world today, you see churches that are experiencing conflicts with members hurting and ministries in danger of falling apart. Anybody know of any of the things that you've heard in the news? Yes, you have. Uh, while some stand by looking helpless like they don't know what's going on. How about all these preachers in the last two years that have killed herself? Yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Well, that wasn't God. No, God. That was another kind of spirit to come into room. And, 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 and they, had, they, had, they had their way with them Amen. some kind of way. Amen. Come on here. Some of the preachers I happen to know. Uh, with, big with big churches, big money, big attendances. Uh, so I, I know somewhere on the road they started off right, uh, but I don't know what happened to them along the journey. Well, one of them, I, I have to talk to some of their, some of their closely related to them, and they said, well, you know, the doctor put him on some kind of a medicine, uh, and it messed with his mind, and he was real depressed, uh, and so then he took that shotgun and blew his head off. I said, uh-huh. So that really, that brought a stigma feeling to the body of Christ. Amen. So there's a lot of things that we experience conflict like we've never known. Uh, and, and it makes you be concerned. Uh, and then there's some things that worries me that Christians don't seem to be, they're just unaware. They're like they're oblivious uh, that there's anything happening uh, and there's spiritual destruction on every hand. Amen. If, if things go the way the world is pursuing, uh, there won't be no churches left for you to go to. If things go the way they're after, there won't be no preacher can stand in a pulpit and preach. Uh, because if we preach, we're going to go to jail. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah, and amen. Uh, glory to God, I plan to preach till the day Jesus checks me up out of here. Uh, I plan to tell somebody Jesus is alive and well. Uh, and you don't need to give up your inheritance uh, for a quick fix. You don't need to give up your inheritance for crack, cocaine, heroin, a uh, uh, meth. You don't need to give up what God will give you. Uh, you don't need to give it up for a roll in the hay uh, with every Tom, Dick, Harry, Sally, Mary. Uh, you don't need to give it up. Uh, you need to hold on uh, to that nail scarred hand uh, and say, I'm never going to let you go. I'm going to go I'm going to keep holding on. I'm going to keep holding on.
and be blind to what's going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> One thing about the Jezebel spirit, it seeks to destroy churches, families. Come look on. at the look at the way families are. Look at the way families are. Come on, let's tell the truth. In every family, there's something going on that's kind of hard to handle. Amen. Amen. Hard. I got five children, and they all got a spouse, and all of them got youngins, and then some of their youngins has got youngins. Amen. You can't get them all together at the same at the same time to save your life. Amen. You can give them a six month notice. And you can text them every week and they'll say, oh, I didn't remember that. What y'all think that is? It's a spirit Amen. to continue to divide Amen. and separate and keep things in conflict. Amen. I know Amen. folks, just, it's okay, y'all, it's all right. It's all right. Another it's thing okay. about Jezebel is she's wicked and cunning and manipulative. Uh, and she, uh, <laughs> she works really good on women. Come on. But she can't work on men too, or yeah, through men. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. So don't put us, it's just on girls, because that spirit can operate with anybody that will give way to it. Mm -hmm. wow. The spirit of Jezebel is wreaking havoc in the church world, tearing down ministries and servants of God, and destroying lives because many are unaware of how this spirit operates. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I've seen a lot of people in Amen. church, I didn't have no bear witness feeling. Amen. Y'all know what that means? Yeah. Bear witness. Yeah. That means uh, that they looked like they were Christians. They acted like they were Christians. I couldn't actually say I saw anything they did that didn't seem to be Christian. But something in my spirit, man, uh, put a red flag and said, pay attention. Watch this. Uh, there's something going on. Uh, so that let me know there was something more there than just Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we need the spirit of discernment so that we can recognize when the spirit of Jezebel is operating on in somebody or through somebody. I'm here to tell you if somebody tries to scare you into whatever it is they're trying to get you to do, you better mark it right there because God does not have to use fear to get what he needs. Hallelujah. The Bible says he don't give you the spirit of fear but of love and a sound mind. So if it's fear manipulation... Jesse, Jesse, hallelujah. You got it, baby. That ain't God working, that's Jesse working. Hallelujah. When, when, when you are convinced that Jesus is the best way, you don't need nobody to scare you with hell. Come on here. Because you'll say, wait a minute, I want to go to heaven. I ain't worried about the rest of it. I want what Jesus has given. Naboth said, my daddy gave me this. My daddy made me this. And I'm not. God forbid that I'd let you have it. God forbid that I'd give it up for money. God forbid I'd give it up for power. God forbid that I'd give it up for pain. Hallelujah. Don't you know there's a lot of folks, a lot of preachers that have given up the truth for fortune and fame and popularity and to make sure that everything is all right. They just preach a little, little this, a little that to make people feel good. But I'll tell you one thing. If you stand before the Lord, it won't be because I didn't tell you. I'm going to tell you. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. The Bible says your sins will separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel a hopeless preacher in here today. Hallelujah. Anyway. So Jezebel, to show how controlling she is, she took control of Ahab, the king. He was the king of Israel. She took control of him. What happened to that little pitiful weak fellow? <laughs> and I remember it is just by God this evening. I just said in the name of Jesus, forgive me, Lord. But I'm going to say this with my eyes shut. For every man that's sitting under the sound of my voice, God has made you to be the priest of your house. And you have to answer for you, your wife, your children, and all those other details of life. When your children get grown and leave your home, they're on their own. But I've come to tell you today, it's the Father's place to make sure that prayer goes on in the house. It's the Father's place to make sure that you cover your wife and your children in prayer. It's the Father's place to lead them to the house of the Lord. Because the Bible says the man is the priest of the home. Yes. Amen. And then, 
It's the man, and then it's the woman, and then it's the youngins. God's order, man. Wait, let me back up. God's order, God, man, woman, children. Did I need to say that again? God's order, God, man, woman, children. That means that mama don't side with the children against daddy. Amen. And that means, Amen. <laughs> I saw them jogging feet up ahead. <laughs> Listen, we all, we all been guilty. Come on here. I don't know what you're like. I've been guilty. I'm going to preach it like it really is. Regardless, even if the chips have to fall, I have to pick my own feet up so I don't step on them. Come on here. I'm just saying that's the order of God. Now, that's the order of God's word. It's God, man, woman, and children. That's how the order goes down. But let me tell you. So Ahab, he knew the order of God is the point I'm trying to make. Ahab knew that it was his responsibility to make government decisions. But instead, Jezebel is controlling him. Right. She took over him. And she gets him to abandon first God. So then he becomes weak. And then she gets him to serve idols. So now he's in real trouble. And she manipulates Naboth's death and causes all that to happen. Do you see that spirit working? Amen. I'm just Amen. trying to. So Jezebel took the throne with King Ahab during a time of political uncertainty. It is no greater time than right now for Jezebel to rear up her ugly head than the political uncertainty that's going on in our land. And the thing that they're after right now is a socialistic government. Uh, that's why they're going with a cashless society. Uh, and that's why I'm saying there's a coin shortage. Uh, and that's why they say when you're paying, you don't got the right amount, they, you want to go up. That means you give them your change. Uh, and I told you before, and I'll tell you again, no, no, and again, I said no. If anybody going to give up, you give up that little piece that I owed you. Come on here. And they're always going to do this to us until some of us begin to stand up and say, it is enough. They're after a cashless society because then they can control your money. Uh, and they can control, they can shut your bank account down. Lord, I didn't mean to get on this. Uh, they can shut your bank account down. Uh, and you, then you'll have no say-so. Uh, and we'll look like a communist country because uh, we'll be standing in line uh, waiting to hope somebody will give us a piece of bread. Uh, but I'm against socialism. Uh, I'm, I'm against everything they want to throw out here. Uh, I'm against them uh, uh, promoting these things that are not like God. I am against the abortion agenda because God is against abortion. I'm against these things that are wrong according to the word of God. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I am a born again blood washed believer and I believe in standing for the truth and standing for what's right. Destroy America from within through her young youth, through her kids. 
Is that not what's happening right now? It's our young people that have reared up because they've not been taught the word of God. They don't know the power of God. They've not been exposed to the anointing of God because parents, instead of being parents, we became friends because we felt sorry for them, so we became friends. And then we gave in to, if they didn't want to go to church, they stayed home. But I'll tell you how it is at my house. If you don't want to go to church, you ain't living in my house. But if you live in my house, you sleep in my bed, you put your to put on my table, eat the food I buy. Uh, then you, when I pack my coats to go to church, you come with me. Uh, hallelujah. There ain't no option to that. You don't get to stay home. Uh, you don't get to stay in an Xbox and, a, and PS4 or whatever it is now. Uh, you don't get to do that while I'm in the house of God. Uh, you got to make your mind up somewhere uh, that you're going to be the parents uh, and not be the friend and the buddy and the pal. Uh, your children need guidelines. Uh, your children need boundaries uh, so they'll know how far they can Jezebel is taking over our kids. They're worshiping all kinds of things. I mean, I, I showed you that t-shirt, going to hell and proud. What kind of child would wear that shirt if they understood the meaning of hell? Not a one. God help us to teach our children right from wrong. Good from evil. Amen. Everything that, that says it's good is not good. Right. Uh, one thing Jezebel did, she slaughtered the prophets of the Lord. Uh -huh. And then she wrongfully killed Naboth. And then she threatened to kill Elijah. And poor old Elijah, he was having a moment. So what I, the whole point is Jezebel just wreaks havoc on whatever's going on in life. Do you understand that? Yeah. And when your life begins to get out of kilter, you need to check and see if Jezebel trying to attack you in some kind of way. Amen. Say, I take authority over that Jezebel spirit, uh, and I bind you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over me, uh, over my spouse, over my house, over my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, uh, and all of them that are yet to come. I plead the blood over them right now. Uh, and Jezebel and all your little imps and demons, you got to pack your bag and get up and get out of here. Uh, the first thing Jezebel wants to do is rip apart relationships. She operates through hate and seduction and calculation and jealousy and manipulation. Obsessive passions for domineering. I'm a strong woman. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm strong. I'm strong. Hear me, I'm strong. So if you bring something to me, you better bring it with the proof in the pudding. You understand that? That means I'm not going to be easily swayed just because you thought it was that way. Amen. You've got to kind of, uh, I don't know where is that country you're from or that uh, state you're from that you know you've got to prove it to them. But there's a state they say that, you know, so they, I ain't going to name them. They might be watching us, so I ain't going to name them. <laughs> so what I'm saying is when it comes to the things of God, you've got to be strong. I'm trying to tell y'all, you got to toughen up. And I'm trying to tell you, you got to get a holy backbone Amen. that you won't crumble. But what I have learned, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. Amen. So you've got Amen. to know, first of all, what you believe. Amen. And you've got to know that we're in a troublesome time. So that's my introduction. I need to preach now, okay? Amen. Amen. Give me a few more minutes. So what the Lord has put in my heart for days, and I've really been working on this for days because it just is so deep within me. He said that we needed fresh mantles of authority. So uh, when I, I think about that, you know, Elijah had a mantle. And so God dealt with Elijah. So I'm going to move on with this. Uh, so I believe everybody in this room would agree with me that we're in perilous times. Amen. So I looked at the word perilous. In the Greek, it means troubled times. We're living there. Amen. And then it, the Strong's lexicon says, uh, dangerous to the point of being fierce and savage. Uh, don't you know every time you cut on the news, it's fierce and it's savage? Amen. We see things on the news used to we never would have seen. They wouldn't have showed us all that stuff going on out there. But now they cover up. We got all that propaganda on the news that said the truth. And we need Jezebel to loose the news media. We need Jezebel to loose them so they can tell the real raw high truth. And stop lying. And stop putting them things out there that don't need to be. We need God to intervene in the news media. You know, so they, they might just have to make a mess up. And then they're going to have to 
fix it up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe uh, that we are in perilous times. This though also in the last day, days, perilous times shall come. Uh, we're living there. Uh, hallelujah. And that word perilous also means uh, becoming slackened and relaxed. And going from a higher place to a lower place. If you don't think we're not living in perilous times, that, that definition, right, slackened and relaxed, uh, is the definition for the church world. Uh, we have slacked back uh, and we've grown relaxed. Uh, it's like we're being rocked to sleep in the devil's rocking chair. Uh, but I come to say, wake up, children of God. Uh, stir yourself uh, and remind yourself what the Word of God has to say. Uh, say, listen here, uh, it's a dangerous time. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't deal with it. Uh, hallelujah. You know, it is attacks from the enemy. They're fierce and savage. Uh, seducing spirits are everywhere. Uh, and they're extremely active right now. Amen. Oh, yes, they are. I won't get no stars today, but it's okay. <laughs> Facebook, you know, they'll put them little hearts on there if they like what you're saying. I might not have none today, but it's all right. I'm still going to say it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This has been stirring in me for three or four days. I'm ready to get it out so I can move on to something else. <laughs> I'll tell you what, and what the Lord told me was, he said, <laughs> Lord, help me to get it the way he said. So it's, the church is slack and relaxed to our commitment to God. Mm -hmm. Think about how easy it is for people to say, I don't need to go to church. Amen. And this pandemic is going to make it worse because they can watch everybody's That's TV uh, on their Facebook, watch everybody's program on Facebook because that we live stream. I mean, it, I, I ain't got to go to church. I can drink my coffee and sit in my pajamas Amen. and I can watch church. Yeah. But there's a verse of scripture I want to remind y'all about on Facebook. The Bible says, For, forsake not the assembling of yourself together, right? even the more so as you see that day approach. So in other words, he says, don't, don't forsake going to the house of God. Don't forsake getting together with the believers. Don't forsake and don't allow the pandemic to make you lazy and lethargic. But say, let me get my honey up out of here and get on to the house of God. Because it's in the house of God I find peace. In the house of God I find joy. In the house of God I find strength. In the house of God. Yeah, hey, hallelujah. You need, we need one another. Amen. So, so we need a boldness to rise in us, right? A lot of people say that I, I'm bold, and I probably am, and the older I get, probably the bolder I am. I won't lie. Because when I was young preaching, I was kind of concerned how people respond. I kind of lost that somewhere along the journey. Like, if you don't respond or you do respond, don't make no difference. As long as I know it's the truth and it's God's word, I'm going to preach it. That's what I'm saying. Amen. So, I am bold when it comes to what I know is right. And if you don't want the truth, you don't want to ask me. Because I'm bold Amen. enough to tell you what the Bible says. Amen. I won't tell you what I say and I won't tell you what somebody else says. I won't tell you what denominations say. I'll tell you what the Bible says. Amen. And it'll be up to you what you do with what the Bible says. If you've ever been in my office, they'll tell you, she'll give you the Bible. Amen. So, <laughs> she's been there a few times. <laughs> so, what's happening is people are becoming slack in their determination to stand for truth and righteousness. And if we don't take a stand, these coming behind us, what world will they have to live in? So this is the, the last piece the Lord gave me. He said, you need the mantle and anointing of Jehu, J-E-H-U. And you'll say, I don't even know who that is. But it's all right, I'm going to tell you who he is. Uh, Jehu uh, had a generational anointing on his life. First of all, his father, his grandfather, let me say it that way, his grandfather uh, was anointed. And... His grandfather's name was uh, Nimshai, and his name meant one who sets free. Mm. That was his grandfather. And then Jehu's daddy was Jehoshaphat. Y'all know his name, don't you? And Jehoshaphat was translated Jehovah Judges. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, the generational mantle, and now God is going to anoint Jehu to do away with Jezebel. Okay. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. I'm going to prove to you. I got a Bible. Amen. 
In 1 Kings 19, you see the life of Elijah after he's come off of Mount Carmel and killed all the prophets of Baal. Y'all remember where he poured the 12 barrels of water and the fire came down and let it off? All right, that's 1 Kings 19. If you read on, they took Jezebel's word that Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal, and she told him, before tomorrow this time, I'll do to you or more or worse than what you've done to all of them. So you see him, he takes tail and runs. That's what happened, in my words. So now, he, he, he's under a juniper tree. He's in a wilderness. He's under a juniper tree, and he's sleeping. Well, an angel wakes him up and says, arise and eat. So he gets up, and there's a, there's a cake baking, and there's a jug of water, and he eats and drinks, and he lays back down and goes back to sleep. A second time, the angel wakes him up and says, arise and eat, because this journey is too great for you. Mm. <clears throat> Help me preach truth, Lord. Yeah. So the truth is, that last meal he had carried him 40 days, and he ended up in a cave. Y'all remember that story? He's in a cave. And he said, you know, I've been faithful. I've done all this for God. He's making his little pity party. And then the Bible says there was a wind, and then there was an earthquake, and then there was a fire, but God wasn't in none of them. But then he came with a still, small voice. Are y'all hearing me? So 1 Kings 19, 15 says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. So God is fixing to give Jehu a mantle of anointing, oh, <clears throat> and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, uh, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So you need to understand uh, that before Jehu was able to deal with Jezebel, he had to have a mantle of anointing. Amen. And before we can deal with this stuff going on in this world, uh, we need a mantle of anointing. Yeah. A mantle, mantle in that day was like a cloak. It was like a mark that said that you've been marked by God. Uh, hallelujah. The Lord said for me to ask you a question. Uh, will you be yoked uh, or will you be mantled? Uh, you got to make a decision. Uh, I, I'm not going to be yoked up with Jezebel. Uh, and when you add your agreement to what Jezebel's doing, you get a yoke around your neck. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. Uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, the anointing is still real. It's still in the church world. It's still being led, led by the spirit of the living God and Jezebel and her imps and all her trainees. Hallelujah. There's a word coming to you, Jesse. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I'm going to give you a space to repent. And then if you don't repent, you're going to meet destruction and everybody that added their agreement with you. So while we've got a chance to repent, while we've got a chance to turn around, oh God, Help us now to do what you ask us to do. Well, how can I agree with Jezebel? I'll give you three or four little examples. Number one, your mind will say, God doesn't care nothing about me. That's a Jezebel call. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be poor. You ain't never going to have nothing. That's a Jezebel call. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to measure up in life. That's a Jezebel call. Mm -hmm. God cannot use you because of your shameful past. That's a Jezebel spirit. Why? Because Jezebel wants to keep you yoked. So you don't have no hope Amen. and no joy yes. and no hope for a future. But I, the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, say yes. God. Amen. <laughs> to prosper you. <laughs> Give me an expected end. Come on here. You know, uh, you, you can say, uh, well, Pastor Ed, I don't understand. Well, let me tell you what, what Brother Jehu did. When he became king of Israel, after he got his mantle of anointing, he rode that chariot so fast they couldn't hardly keep up with the man. I, I want to drive a chariot like that just one good time. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Because he was slaying as he was going. But I don't know if he was praying, but he was slaying. And when he got down to the, to the castle or to the palace uh, where Jezebel was up looking in the window, looking out the window, he said, <laughs> anybody up there like... And there was two, two guys up there. He said, throw her down. Uh -huh. <laughs> they throwed her down. He, see, he wasn't afraid because he had been anointed with a mantle. Uh -huh. 
of the heart. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? God says, I'm still anointing my people with mantles of authority. And you can count on them. There's going to people going to rise up now that you never thought would have anything. And God said, I've chosen them. I'm going to use them in this hour. Glory to God. They won't be afraid of Jesse and her friends. They'll be confident in the God of heaven and they're going to stand. Glory to God. If you remember Gideon, he was hiding, threshing out the wheat, but he was hiding in the, in the press. But let me tell you what the Lord does. Instead of speaking to what Gideon saw himself as, uh, he spoke to Gideon's potential uh, instead of what Gideon thought he was. Are you hearing me? Uh, I'm trying to speak to your potential this morning uh, and tell you that Gideon got a mantle and he delivered his family. Uh, I've come to tell you there's great potential uh, in every one of you. You have great ability uh, to do the work of the kingdom. Uh, so make your mind up. Uh, hallelujah. I may not feel strong, but the one that lives in me is strong. Uh, I may not have all the answers, but the one who lives in me is the answer. Hallelujah. We need to be mantled. Hallelujah. 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 From that day on, Gideon walked in authority with God because he got that mantle. He said, Are you confused? I'm the weak. I'm the least, least one in my daddy's house. Neighbor said, Wait a minute. God forbid that I should give you what the Lord's given me. You may not see it as very much, but I, honey, it's the best thing I ever had. Amen. I'm just telling you. Amen. You know, I may not be popular. It's okay. But what Jesus has done to me makes me happy. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of what the Lord has done in my life. I'll tell you right now. I, yes, I, 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 I'm excited about Jesus. I'm even excited about this church. Amen. And you say, well, where's all the people at? Well, some of them are staying home, like I told you, watching on Facebook because they're scared of the COVID. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. But I'm just saying thank you for those of you that come. I appreciate Amen. it. Amen. But you know what? I made a decision my own self. And I said, Lord, if don't nobody go, I'm going to be there. Amen. We Amen. shut up long Amen. enough. I'm going to be there. If nobody else don't come, I'm going, Lord. Amen. So uh, in my closing thought, Ephesians 1 and 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So everything you need is in him. So I'm just, he's the mediator of the new covenant. And he's made sure that what we need, he has made available. So, are you going to be yoked? Or are you going to be mantled? The choice is yours. So, this is what I believe the Lord is saying to this church. Y'all ready? I am breathing afresh upon the Jehu mantle of the Father. This mantle will empower my people to rise up in authority against the powers of darkness that oppose my spirit. Hmm. I am releasing an anointing to put the Jezebel spirit underfoot and destroy a demonic domain that is attempting to abort destiny. These are perilous times, but if my people will appeal to the courts of heaven concerning the injustice upon this earth, I will empower the Jehus to not only touch this generation, but also the generations to come. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. And we thank you for your mantle that you desire to rest upon each of us. Father, help us to receive that that you've made available to us. And Lord, in any area that we've been manipulated or controlled or we've even done it to someone else, God, we ask you this morning that you would wash us in your precious blood. Father God, I ask you to uh, un, un, uh, just reveal. <laughs> yes, Lord, I hear you. Lord, I ask you, God, to reveal. Uh, oh, God, let the scales fall from our eyes so that we can see clearly. Oh, God, we can recognize. Uh, give us a spirit of discernment that we'll be able to identify uh, what's going on round about us. Do not let us be ignorant to Satan's devices. Uh, oh, God, we thank you this morning. <laughs> For your grace, your mercy. We thank you this morning for the hope we have, oh God. Uh, Father, Lord, I thank you that you're going to expose Jezebel and all her little imps. Uh, and God, in every preacher, every church, every pastor, uh, every evangelist, every bishop, every apostle, uh, every spirit that's not working like you. Uh, we ask you now, God, that you would bring it down uh, in Jesus' name. And we break the yoke uh, and, the, and the adversary. Uh, and we loose the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, to touch lives uh, 
and change minds in Jesus' name. Father, strengthen your people that are here today. God, we thank you, Lord, that they're here. We ask you to bless them and to help them in Jesus' name. God, we pray for those that have been leaving prayer requests on Facebook in different ways. God, we ask you that you'd strengthen them and encourage them, heal, deliver, and set free. God, we thank you that COVID-19 has come to an end and the glory of the Lord is revealed in Jesus' name. God, we thank you that the truth is being exposed. Oh, God, I thank you that you anoint your people's ears that they can hear clearly and that they can discern truth from lie. Oh God, we thank you this morning uh, that you are ever present help in the time of trouble uh, and God, we are your people the sheep of your pasture uh, use us in this last hour and we give you praise for it in Jesus' righteous name Amen, Amen. I pray that the Lord make you bold as